Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gary with another Fan TV. Thank you guys for another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Ravens' first day of training camp is here. Um, it's exciting. I mean, was, listen, now we're actually in football season. We're here. No more waiting around. No more top 10. Well, probably will be some more top 10 lists, but we have real actual football going on that we get to talk about. So let's talk about it. All right. Um, so first thing we want to talk about is the Ravens are going to pay tribute to Jalen Ferguson in some form or fashion. John Harbaugh said that him, and the players and the coaches, I guess, will have some say-so, some back and forth about how it's going to be, whether it's sticker on the helmet, something on the field, or you know, a tribute video, something that's going to happen where they're going to honor Jalen Ferguson for this upcoming season. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate young player that that lost his life uh, in any way is tragic. So you know, you know, shout out to his family, prayers to his family that, that they're you know okay during this trying time um once you're raven always raven i knew the rape we always knew the ravens were going through something to honor jalen ferguson and um so we'll see what that ends up being okay um but as far as things that um football things with the ravens as, as it currently stands right now uh first thing man how practice are being run practice is being run at a shorter clip usually practices go i think two hours plus this practice was about 90 minutes and this is in um in response to what happened last year with all the injuries, the Ravens are taking massive precautions. So we're talking about shorter practices, you know, around 90 minutes or so. We'll see if this trend continues or if this is just for the early part of training camp. But I can see it continuing. Uh, also, we're talking about not as many 11 on 11 plays to reduce the chance of injury. So a lot more 7 on 7, not as much 11 on 11, just because we know that when that happens, injuries can come. Um, what else? They said that John Harbaugh said that the, uh, another reason for the shorter practices right now in the early stages is the Ravens are just focused on timing and rhythm right now. That's what they're trying to get down. So it's not so much about um, going on 11 11, going hard. All practice is about getting timing and rhythm down so you can become a better team in the coming weeks. Um, I feel like the Ravens are, they want to do a trajectory, right? They want to start down here and then ramp up to the season. Um, they, they don't want to go full pelt right out the gate, have any injuries. They want to kind of slowly ramp up and see if that process works better for them. And I'm good with that, right? Um, the Ravens, no toys. They have a hard training camp, hard conditioning test. I think Ben Cleveland um, is on a non-football non injury list because he failed the conditioning test today. So he's not allowed to practice. Excuse me. So um, they want to have an effective training camp. It's not just about going hard all day they want to they want to have effective and, and be precise in what they're doing okay um now also what happened today was ronnie stanley and marcus peters both watched practice from the sidelines they didn't participate in any drills but they were all doing the field being engaged listening and that's good they said that ronnie stanley is looking better and better each day and the same for marcus marcus peters um, so the quicker we can get those guys back, the better. I think they're in a position where they will play during training camp and then, you know, be ready to go for the regular season. Uh, the most interesting player, as far as the injuries go, was J.K. Dobbins, right? Apparently during the last 20, 30 minutes of practice, J.K. Dobbins tried to get on the field. <laughs> um, apparently he asked Harbaugh, Harbaugh told him no. Apparently he, then he went and talked to uh, Eric DaCosta. And Eric DeCosta pretty much told him the same thing that, no, you, you're not going to play right now, J.K. It's not happening. A uh, couple things. All right. It's good that J.K. Dobbins feels like he's in a good enough space to actually practice and play on the field. But this is not right. This is not when we need you. Day one of training camp is not when we need J.K. Dobbins on the field. That's not what's important. It's about the regular season, middle of the season, end of the season, playoffs. Whether you're here on training camp day one or training camp day 20, it doesn't matter, J.K., Let's let's slowly ramp up. Let's not rush back onto the field. Now, when I mentioned in my previous videos, I'm talking about J.K. Dobbins, that the coaches have an important part to play in telling him no. And, well, I said the training staff, but that, that includes the coaches as well. The coaches, and the coaches did that. They told J.K. Dobbins no. And that's important. A player is always going to feel like they're ready to go, want to get back on the field. The coaches have to be that buffer, that guy in between to say, listen, you're not ready. We don't need you out there right now, J.K. It's okay. Go sit down, chill, do your rehab. We'll get you on the field. All right. Um, now, as far as what happened on the field with players who who are not injured, um, let's start with the defense, right? Only really 
one defensive player stood out. It's because mainly because shorter practice, not much 11 on 11. So it's not really much to go off on today, all right, just to be honest. But Marcus Williams, the new addition, had a good day. Apparently, he guarded Mark Andrews a couple times, got a couple pass deflections, almost interception. They said he jumped one and deflected it before Mark Andrews could fully catch the ball. So he's doing what we expected him to do. Now, not exactly maybe covering tight ends necessarily, but having instincts to showing that when the ball is around, it could very well be his. That's one of his biggest traits. That's one of the biggest things the Ravens wanted was a true middle of the field, dangerous safety that when the ball is in the air, it could be his. And we just didn't have that last year, right? So Marcus Williams adding that already feels great. Now, offensively, what happened? Um, Lamar Jackson was 8 for 14 overall. That includes 5 for 8 and 11 on 11, 3 for 6 and 7 on 7 drills. Um, they said that those six incompletions were some deflections like we just talked about with uh, Marcus Williams. So, you know, that, that correlates right there. And some drops. Now, you don't want to hear about the drops because... In my opinion, all of these Ravens receivers, even though unproven, one of their all of their biggest extras out of college was their hands, right? Rashad Bateman, Duvernay, Prochet, Tyler Wallace were all guys known for having great hands. So let's see that continue and transfer on to this field. Now, it could have been tight ends as well. They didn't spe- they didn't really specify who was dropping passes, but at the end of the day, uh, Lamar Jackson needs to feel confident throwing me the ball that you're going to bring it in. Okay. Now they said play of the day, play of the day. Devin DuVernay, back shoulder fade from Lamar Jackson. He said it was a beautiful ball, beautiful catch. Touchdown, I believe they said it was on uh, Kevon Seymour. Okay, I love this play for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, Devin, du- Devin DuVernay caught the ball. Devin DuVernay is one of the three Ravens wide receivers that I said have to step up when we know their names. Uh, DuVernay, Prochet, and Wallace. Somebody has to separate themselves. And right now, player of the day from the reporter's uh, standpoint, that's Devin DuVernay, okay? That's great. We need Devin DuVernay to be able to work the slot, be able to get position on guys, and actually run away from defenders. Use that world-class speed that you have. All right? You're one of the fastest players in the NFL. Now we need to see that translate into football skill. And Devin DuVernay has a lot of talent, man. At Texas, he was a premier slot receiver. At the Ravens, it hasn't worked out like that. But I remember last year, every time Devin DuVernay came on the field, it's seven yards a pop. Every time he touches the ball, something positive happens. I can't remember too many times Devin Duvernay touching the ball and there was a negative effect on the, on, on the game, okay? Uh, so, good to hear that play from him. Now, secondly, the back shoulder throw. Lamar Jackson doesn't do that too often. The Ravens don't have that too much in their offense. That's important because this is a red zone weapon. You see, and you see, you see Aaron Rodgers and you see Devontae Adams do that all the time, okay? Now, obviously, Devontae Adams is in Oakland now and I'm not comparing Aaron Rodgers and uh, Devontae Adams' connection to what we got here. But what I'm saying is, this is a play where it almost takes the defensive back out of the play. If the ball is thrown correctly and him and the quarterback and the receiver on, on, on good timing, there's very little a defender can do about a back shoulder throw. And it's a dangerous, dangerous weapon. Lamar has the arm talent and the accuracy to make this throw. So it's good to see that the Ravens are at least trying it in practice. And I hope that they try doing the games. Because it's um, it's a red zone weapon. It's another red zone weapon. Um it can be very easy to get ball down in the red zone. So you have the ability to come out with a back shoulder throw. Beautiful. Uh, so that's pretty much it for day one of the Ravens practice. Like I said, it's only day one. So it was a little uneventful. Uh, as we ramp up, I'm sure that more news will come out. Uh, practice will get more intense. But that's about it, man. Um, we'll see what happens day two. Right? It's your boy Gabriel. This is the Fan TV. I'm out.